Let's bring in Howie Long, the Hall of Famer. I think you retired at 33, Howie. Does that sound right? 34. Uh, I played in the Pro Bowl at 34. So, yeah, the season was 33. Yeah. But, but, you know, do you, do you have a day where you go, hey, this is, this is the day I make my decision? Like, did, did you have a moment of clarity where you go, okay, that's it. I'm going to retire. <clears throat> well, my problem was, in terms of family, I had three sons. Chris was eight at the time. Uh, and with football, you, you just, it, particularly at that point where I played 13 years and not a dollar of my money was guaranteed. Uh, when you start getting up towards double digits in surgeries, you know, that's one part of the equation. The other part of the equation is Chris is eight years old and I'm not there for burger day. I'm not there for, you know, dad day. Uh, <clears throat> and I seriously wanted to change that given my background. I wanted my, uh, my father son relationship with my three boys to be, to be different. And, you know, I never regretted. I had the opportunity to coach little league baseball for eight years, high school football for eight years, uh, watch them all kind of go on their way to college. And like you said, you know, your situation was kind of similar where, you know, wait a second, what are we doing here? This is going to be over, you know, before you know it. <clears throat> and I'm glad I did. I really am. And, you know, I, I don't want anybody to retire. If you want to play, continue yeah. to play, you know, unless you, uh, your body says you can't play any longer. But what do you think is at the core of this with Brady? He wants to win championships. It's all about championships. I don't know if you do inventory with the Buccaneers and say, I don't know who's coming back. Can we still win another championship? Then you start to factor in with family. I think Giselle has been campaigning behind the scenes for a while to have Tom retire here. So how do you think this plays out? Well, I, I think there are, there are players who, who are consumed, and then there's Tom. Uh, Tom's at another level. And, and that's not just, you know, August through January. That's the off season. And the kind of trick to it is, and, you know, you have to pay the piper because the older you get, the more you have to do in the off season. And I think, you know, Tom make, made a good point that, yeah, you do have time off in the off season as a football player, but for that six months, seven months, you're, you're checked out, uh, whether you've been it or not. Because, you know, it's, it's next week, it's on to the next week, you know, forget about last week, and it's on to the next day. And, you know, in those days, Wednesday, Thursday practices were, you know, full go live goal line live inside run, live pass rush live team period. Now they're in hats and, you know, physically, I think players are, are capable of playing longer because they're being taken care of more. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he walks away, but I think that could be in part to maybe Tampa is not going to be one of the elite teams next year, given they got to re-sign some people, salary cap issues, all of those things. Um, I'm wondering if the NFL addresses overtime in the offseason. Usually takes, you know, a moment where we go, I'm upset with overtime, and then we calm yeah, down. Hey. But would you, would you want the NFL to reconsider what overtime is? Maybe in the playoffs, not necessarily regular season. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I certainly, you know, being at the game, you know, I, with, with a son on Kansas City, I, I'm, I'm happy that you know, uh, Kansas City gets the ball, drives down the field, scores a touchdown. That's that's great. But the opposite happened to them a few years ago versus New England, and Andy Reid brought it up, and uh, it, it was not, it didn't draw much of any support. Um, <clears throat> I think this one. Because of this kind of game where, you know, it's, it's not the Patriots in Atlanta where the Patriots are down 28 to three. This was Ali Frazier, 15 rounds. These two guys, you know, just when you think, wow, he can't respond to that. You know, Mahomes does or, or, or Allen does the next series. And it, it was a showcase of, what I think is, uh, you know, we always wonder where the, when's the next generation of quarterbacks coming? And, you know, with us, it was Marino and Elway and Jim Kelly and Warren Moon and, you know, uh, Steve Young and all that. And we just, I think we're throwing the ball more now than ever. Uh, and I think the interesting thing about both guys 
came from not big programs. Josh Allen was a guy who, you know, struggled to get scholarship offers, ends up going to Wyoming. The knock on him was he was, he was inaccurate. Um, and it's an interesting kind of exercise is how many teams would trade for Patrick Mahomes? I, I don't think Buffalo's on that list. How many teams would trade for Josh Allen? I don't think Kansas City's on that list. I think they're both happy with their quarterback. It's just, it's nuance and it's, you know, play here, play there in a game like that. Zero turnovers, four penalties. It was just a great, great game. And, and it was emotionally exhausting just sitting in the stands. So how do you change overtime? Well, I think you have I, I think you have to say both teams have an opportunity to possess the ball. Uh, you know, I, I, I think there are those who say, well, wait a second. Okay. You, you can't can sit against the ball if, if you don't want the game to end, then, you know, force them to kick a field goal and Josh Allen have an opportunity to drive down the field, and score a touchdown. I, I, I certainly see where, and it's certainly something that's been brought up, you know, by a number of people just in passing, whether it's at a hotel or, you know, in traveling, uh, I think people want to see both teams get the ball. And I think it's something Andy brought up, and Andy was happy that uh, it got poo-pooed, you know, a few years ago. Talking to Howie Long, the Hall of Famer, and Fox will have San Francisco against the Rams. You know, people try to say all the right things about Jimmy Garoppolo, Howie. You know, that, that he, he, all he does is win. I, really, it's about he doesn't, he doesn't lose. I don't think he wins. It's just he he doesn't lose. You're asking him not to lose. It feels like I I, I, think, I, I, I think Terry had one of those Yogi Berra <laughs> you know, year, years ago, and I and I he and I talked about it last week. You can lose with me, but you can't win without me. <laughs> and you know Jimmy is he's under so much fire all the time. He's got the thumb. He's got the shoulder. He's beat up. Um, you just take the Green Bay, for example, you know, they run a lot of pressure. Uh, things weren't working out. It looks like any throw outside the numbers is, is a Herculean task for him. Uh, but at the end of the game, when it counted, and it, it was the same thing with the Ram game, uh, he just comes through. And, you know, is, is he the guy that – is he the guy that you signed to a you know $130 million deal? I'm, I'm not sure that's going to be the case. I think there'll be a market for Jimmy. And I think they have an interesting decision to make, whether their young quarterback is ready. And and uh, Jimmy certainly is well-liked by the team. And, and you know, as, as evidenced by the Kittle comments and uh, comments from a number of teammates, they believe in him. They think they can win with him. That's all that's important. And, and Dan, it really doesn't matter what you think or I think yeah. or anyone outside the building thinks. They like Jimmy Garoppolo. The team does. You all in on the Rams? You know, I, I give this San Francisco team is tough. Uh, they really, really are. They're beat up. I mean, it seemed like every other play, somebody was hobbling off the field, whether it was Debo Samuel or Williams. Uh, you know, they've, they've got a number of guys that are banged up and, you're going to remember all the teams that are left have played the full slate of games because the two number one seeds are, are now down. So we're on, in, on, in uncharted territory coming up here real soon. Um, if they can run the ball effectively, which, you know, listen, three of the four coaches that were left in the final four, uh, you look at the floor, you look at Shanahan, you look at McVay. They all coached in Washington. They all ran the same system or variations of it. And I think these two are contrasting styles and what they want to do. Uh, I think the last time the Rams had a first round pick, it was, you know, Barack Obama was in office. I mean, they just do it differently. They do it more like the Yankees or the Lakers. Um, now they have to kind of follow through on it. It's a new state, $5 billion stadium. I, I, I think ownership made it very clear that they wanted to play in this game. So there's a lot riding on this game for the Rams. Think your Raiders go Jim Harbaugh, Josh McDaniels, other? I have no idea. 
I, I really don't. Um, Are you involved I, at all? I thought, I thought, I thought Rich Passaccia did a great job. Yeah, I, I really did. I thought he did himself a, a real solid uh, with the way he performed. You think about the chaotic situation there with, you know, the Gruden departure, uh, the Rugs, you know, tragedy. Uh, those are things that really, really, you know, can rock a football team. And they had a bit of a, a dip there for three, four games. And, you know, he kind of brought them out of it. And, you know, I, I think the comparison would be um, John Harbaugh coming from Philadelphia as a special teams coach to, to the Ravens. And, you know, that special teams coach, like the strength coach, he interfaces with every single guy on the team. And, True. Uh, I think they liked him. They feared him sufficiently. Uh, but, you know, Mark's got to make that decision. He's interviewing a lot of people. I think they're being very thorough. Are you in a wine cellar? Like, what's what's the rock? What's the rock? This is, uh, uh, I'm in Arizona. I'm, this is our dining room. Uh, it's yeah. the only quiet spot I could find where the dog wouldn't bark or, you know. That's your door dining bark. room that you've got. It looks like a castle wall behind you. It looks well, like Game of Thrones. Right, right. No, it, it, it does. I, I imagine it does, but it's really the quietest spot in the house. Is there, you know, I got Seton driving through uh, cross country. Uh, I heard about that. Yeah, I mean. You I, guys I, do motivational tours with all that, you know, the steroid talk and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you the know. Juice, what was it, the juice bar? And yeah. yeah now he's getting in a van <laughs> and going across the country. Do you realize what's out there right now? It's It's not safe. Truck stops are not safe anymore. Can he stay at your house? Which one? <laughs> the one you're in now. Uh, what time is he? What time is he traveling? Uh, see, what time would you be passing through uh, Scottsdale? Probably uh, like Thursday, Friday ish. This Thursday, Friday? Yeah, next week. <laughs> next, next, next Thursday, Friday. Oh, next Thursday, Friday. Well. You know, if if we if we decide to head home, I mean, he certainly could have the keys to the house. Uh, we'd have to we'd have to I'd have to I'd have to do a, a vetting check on him. I, I'm <laughs> oh, not then, sure. then that's not good. That's not going to happen. Not good. Yeah, that's not going to that's not going to maybe he just goes to the Montana house. He could go there. It's cold. Yeah. Uh, but it's God, it's beautiful. And and I have some friends up there that just started jumping in the lake and you know Oh my God. What? <laughs> they're crazy. It's kind of a challenge thing. I have no idea. I Damn. I I've I've been challenged. I don't want to be challenged. <laughs> Does anybody ever want to like block you or hit you? Like it a- I'll tell you one time we were up there in Montana, and this wasn't too long ago, three, four years ago. And uh, Kyle was Kyle was up there working out, and he needed to work on Kyle's three thirty, you know, six seven, and heavy handed, really heavy handed. And people who know heavy handed understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> I, I was, you know, doing some simulated moves on him, you know, jab in, come out, you know. He stuck me in the chest, and I'm telling you, I f-ed up. <laughs> I said, ah, God, it's, I, I can't play with you anymore. You're, I'm old. You're not. You're, my ribs were locked up for maybe two weeks. Imagine I, that your, kid, your kids are beating you up in your own driveway. Anthony Munoz did that to me one time at ESPN. He came in, and I would always do like a swim move. Like I would, yeah. I walk up to him and I go, "Hey, Anthony," and I do a swim move, and he saw it. And he laughed the first couple of times, and then, <laughs> and then I did it one other time to him. A couple of weeks later, he grabbed me with both hands in the ribs and just held me there. And he goes, you know what I, you know what I think is 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 really interesting. I think people think, you know, well, I go to the gym. I'm I'm in good shape. I you know I I, I lift a lot of weight. You know, football, the NFL is like NASCAR. I didn't get NASCAR. You, you, you don't get NASCAR watching TV. It's just around and around and around. Okay, enough already. Round, round, round. You go down turn three on the rail and a car goes by at 200 miles an hour. That's the NFL. And when you see something 6'4", 260 runs a 4'4", four, four, 
It's a car going by. And, and that's the other thing. People always say, well, I run a 4.7 or I run a 4.6 or I run a 4.5. Baloney you do. Uh, it's a big league. It's, and I say we need restrictor plates on our league. It's so big. It's so fast. Uh, these defensive linemen, the offensive linemen. Hey, look, Terry Bradshaw's offensive line averaged 255. Yeah. The biggest line in football averaged 325 right now. The well, guy that plays Joe Green's position, and Joe was 275, 280, I think. That guy's 330. I told He's, people you would never let your kids play football if you watched a game from the sidelines, an NFL game from the sidelines, and listen to the collisions Yes, you would. You would say, "Oh, I hope they could play Pop Warner," but that's about it because it is. You no, know, and, and that's that's so a great point. Until you're down there on the field and you see the speed and the impact, you know, you just don't get it. Um, I certainly didn't say Diane and I didn't certainly say, "Wow, we want our kids to play football." It was the exact opposite. Uh, I don't think any of our boys played as young kids. Uh, Chris came to me to say he wanted to play, and Kyle played baseball and. Uh, tried to push him towards baseball a little bit, I think. But, you know, at the end of the day, genetics are genetics, and you are who you are. Hey, it's great to catch up with you. Hope you you look great. And, uh, you know, Seton is going to just keep driving by the house. He's, <laughs> he's not going to stop. All right. Next Thursday, he will not. Head on a swivel, Seton. Head on a swivel. <laughs> Thank you, Howie. All right, partner. That's uh, Howie Long, Hall of Famer. Always love having him on. Fox has uh, the Niners and the Rams. That'll be Sunday at 6.30 Eastern.